Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this beam using flexibility matrix method. Before analyzing, let us see the beam one time. In this beam, there are two spans, span AB and span BC. Also, there is an overhanging span CD. In the span AB, there is a point load 72 kN acting in the center. In the span BC, there is a uniformly distributed load 24 kN per meter acting for the full span. In the overhanging span CD, there is a point load 15 kN acting in the point D. In the point A, there is a fixed support. In the point B and in the point C, there are hinged supports. Span AB is 4 meter long. Span BC is 5 meter long. The overhanging span CD is 2 meter long. In this analysis, we can easily calculate MC because on the right of C there is overhanging. To calculate MC, we have to find movement in the point C from the point D. In the point D, there is a point load 15 kN. The overhanging distance is 2 meter. So, when we multiply the load 15 kN with the distance 2 meter, we will get the movement MC which is equal to minus 30 kN meter. Here we have to be very careful. Here when we apply the load from the overhanging span, we have to always apply with the negative sign. Because of that we are getting a negative movement. In this beam, the number of unknown reactions and movements are 4. They are MA, RA, RB and RC. The available equilibrium equations are 2. Sigma M is equal to 0 and Sigma V is equal to 0. The degree of static indeterminacy is equal to 4 minus 2. We will get 2. Let us release MA and MB. This is our released structure. When we release MA and MB, this continuous beam becomes two different simply supported beams. In the released structure, no need to consider the overhanging span. We have made the released structure. Now let us make the coordinates diagram. In this analysis, there are two coordinates. The coordinates are in the point A and in the point B because in these points only we have removed the movements. We know the formula for calculating the final movements. P matrix is equal to delta matrix inverse into delta matrix minus delta L matrix. Inside the P matrix we will have MA and MB because these are the movements we have released. Inside the P matrix, delta L matrix and delta matrix, we will have two values. Because in this analysis, there are two coordinates. In this formula, first let us find delta L matrix. Inside the delta L matrix, we will have displacements in coordinate direction. We have released MA and MB. So, in this analysis, the displacements are the slopes. We have to find the slope values in the coordinates. Using the conjugate beams, we can find the slope values. Using the loads, let us make the conjugate beams. In a simply supported beam, if point load is acting on the center, the formula for the maximum bending moment is WL upon 4. Using the formula, we can calculate this ordinate. In the simply supported beam, if UDL is acting for the full span, 
the formula for calculating maximum bending moment is wl square upon 8 using the formula we can calculate this ordinate we know that in the conjugate beam we have to divide the moment by ei let us name the conjugate beams as a dash b dash and b dash c dash Inside the delta L matrix, we have to find two values, delta 1L and delta 2L. The first value should be calculated from the first coordinate and the second value should be calculated from the second coordinate. Let us calculate delta 1L. For that, we have to find RA dash. This is a symmetrical diagram. RA dash will be equal to the area divided by 2. We know the formula for the area of a triangle half into breadth into height. The area divided by 2 we will get RA dash. For delta 1L let us apply RA dash. Now let us calculate delta 2L. For that, we have to find RB dash. We have to calculate RB dash from the beam A dash B dash and from the beam B dash C dash. First, let us calculate RB dash from the beam A dash B dash. Here, we can easily calculate RB dash by dividing the area by 2. In the previous step, we have already calculated RA dash. RA dash and RB dash will be same because it is symmetrical. In the same way we calculated RA dash, we can calculate RB dash which is equal to 72 upon EI. Now let us calculate RB dash in the beam B dash C dash. It is also symmetrical loading. So we can easily calculate RB dash. The area divided by 2, we will get RB dash. The area formula for this parabola is 2 upon 3 into breadth into height. The area divided by 2, we are getting RB dash, which is equal to 125 upon EI. For delta 2L, we have to add both of these values. After adding, we are getting 197 upon EI. In the delta L matrix, we have calculated both of the values. Let us apply them. 1 upon EA is common. Let us keep it outside. Alternatively, using the formulas, we can calculate the reactions. In the beam A dash B dash, we had similar kind of loading. The formulas to calculate the reactions are WL upon 4 and WL upon 4. Here W is 72 upon EI, L is 4. Using the formula, we are getting 72 upon EI. In the beam B dash C dash, we had parabolic kind of loading. The formulas to calculate the reactions are WL upon 3 and WL upon 3. Here W is 75 upon EI, L is 5. When we apply the values inside the formula, we are getting RB dash. For delta 1L, let us apply the value of RA dash. For delta 2L, we have to add these two values. After adding, we are getting 197 upon EI. So, using the formulas also, we can easily find delta L matrix. In this formula, now let us find delta matrix. Delta matrix is the final displacements. In this analysis, we have calculated one final moment that is mc minus 30 kN meter. We have to find the slope due to this moment. So, in the released structure, we have to apply mc in the anticlockwise direction and find the slope. Inside the delta matrix, we will have two values, delta 1 and delta 2. 
since we are having two coordinates delta 1 should be calculated from the first coordinate and delta 2 should be calculated from the second coordinate when we apply mc in the point c the moment here will be 30 and here it will be 0 using that we can make this diagram we know that in the conjugate beam we have to divide the moment by ei now let us calculate delta 1 for that we have to find ra dash ra dash will be 0 because in the beam a dash b dash there is no loading now let us calculate delta 2 for that we have to find rb dash in the beam a dash b dash rb dash will be 0 so we have to find rb dash only in the beam b dash c dash now let's see the formula to calculate rb dash in this kind of triangular loading we can easily calculate the reactions using the formulas for the maximum side the reaction is wl upon 3 for the minimum loading side the reaction is wl upon 6 we have to calculate rb dash in the minimum loading side the formula is wl upon 6 here w is 30 upon ei l is 5 when we apply the values inside the formula we are getting 25 upon ei in the delta matrix we have calculated both of the values let us apply them let us keep 1 upon ei outside in this formula now we are going to calculate the flexibility matrix let us see the size of the flexibility matrix for three coordinates the size will be 3 by 3 for two coordinates the size will be 2 by 2 for one coordinate the size will be 1 by 1 in this analysis there are two coordinates so the size of the matrix will be 2 by 2 in this matrix now let us make the first row for that we have to apply unit movement in the first coordinate when we apply unit movement in the point a here the moment will be 1 and here it will be 0 using that we can make this diagram now let us calculate delta 1 1 for that we have to find ra dash we have already seen the formulas for the maximum loading side the reaction will be wl upon 3 and for the minimum side the reaction will be wl upon 6 ra dash is located in the maximum loading side so the formula for ra dash is wl upon 3 here w is 1 upon ei l is 4 finally for ra dash we are getting 4 upon 3 ei now let us calculate rb dash rb dash is located in the minimum loading side the formula is wl upon 6 using the formula we can calculate rb dash for delta 1 1 we have to apply the value of ra dash for delta 1 2 we have to apply the value of rb dash in the flexibility matrix we have calculated the first row now let us make the second row for that we have to apply unit movement in the second coordinate when we apply unit movement in the second coordinate the movement in the point b will be 1 and the point a and the point c it will be 0 using that we can make these two diagrams now let us calculate delta 2 1 for that we have to find ra dash ra dash is in the minimum loading side the formula to calculate ra dash is wl upon 6 here w is 1 upon ea l is 4 when we apply the values inside the formula we are getting 2 upon 3 ea now let us calculate delta 2 2 for that we have to find rb dash rb dash should be calculated in both of the beams 
First, let us calculate in the beam A dash B dash. RB dash is located in the maximum loading side. The formula to calculate RB dash is WL upon 3. Using the formula, we can get RB dash. Now, let us calculate RB dash in the beam B dash C dash. Here also, RB dash is located in the maximum loading side. So, we have to apply the same formula WL upon 3. Here, W is 1 upon EI, L is 5. When we apply the values inside the formula, we are getting 5 upon 3 EI. For delta 2, 1, we have to apply the value of RA dash. For delta 2, 2, we have to add both of these RB dash values. After adding, we are getting 3 upon EI. In the flexibility matrix, we have calculated both of the rows. 1 upon EA is constant. Let us keep it outside. In this formula, we have calculated all of the values. Let us apply them. 1 upon EA inverse is equal to EA. Then, let us add these two matrices. After adding, we are getting this. Then, we can eliminate this EA and this EA. For this matrix, we have to find the inverse. We can apply all of the values in the calculator and get the inverse. If you do not know how to find inverse in the calculator, see the description below. There is a link. You can click the link and watch the video. I have used the calculator and got the inverse. After multiplying these two matrices, we are getting MA and MB. In this analysis, we have calculated all of the moments. MC we have already calculated in the first step. MA and MB just before we have calculated. Now we are going to calculate the reactions. First, let us take the span AB and calculate the reactions. In the span AB, there are two moments. MA which is acting in the anti-clockwise direction, MB which is acting in the clockwise direction. By taking moment above to B, we can calculate RA. By applying the rule sigma V is equal to 0, we can calculate RB1. Now let us take the spans BC and the overhanging span CD together and calculate the reactions. Here we have to consider only one moment MB which is acting in the anti-clockwise direction. No need to consider MC because it will get eliminated when we take moment. By taking moment about C, I am calculating RB2. Then applying the rule sigma V is equal to 0 I am calculating RC. Now let us add RB1 and RB2 so that we will get RB. Now we are going to make the shear force diagram. Before drawing the diagram, let us calculate the shear force values. I am moving towards right hand side. Upwards will be positive and downwards will be negative. Using the values, we can draw the shear force diagram. Now, let us make the free movement diagram, then end movement diagram. After that, let us combine both of the diagrams so that we will get the bending movement diagram. Now, we are going to end the session. Thank you for watching this video.